The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials uh, down 15, NASDAQ off 22, S&P's off 3, gold contract up $6, trading at 1337 an ounce. You get silver up 5 cents, $14.79 an ounce. Light sweet crew down a buck 13, $52.14 a barrel. We're going to get uh, the EIA numbers out this morning. We sure are, man. We get some volatility already in that market. Yeah, 51 well, that, handle. Yeah. Had a build last night. Okay. You know, uh, you get about, uh, I think it's 4.5. For the five, API? Yeah, cool. 5.5. Uh, okay. Plenty of oil cheaper, out here, folks. Cheaper prices. I like yeah. it. Notes and bonds. You get the 10-year note up five ticks, 126.31. 30-year bond flat, 153.19. And King Dollar. King Dollar up 65 ticks, 96.710. Now, King Dollar's had a hard time the last couple of days just trying to get higher. No volume behind the move. Really got a sideways move out here. Uh, the bulls and bears are going to be fighting over this uh, all day long, I suspect. Euro. Euro is uh, trading at 113. The yen is at 108 and a quarter. And the pound is at 127 to 1 U.S. dollar. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks at TD Ameritrade. Think or swim as we do each and every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Don't forget, folks. Outstanding show here every trading day, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Times. You want to understand option, option strategies, futures. If you haven't test driven yet, the Think or Swim platform is really easy to do. Come over to our website at TFNN, hit the banner, bring it up, the Ohio to trade with paper money. It's a phenomenal platform, uh, and if you want to know uh, <laughs> whether it's implied volatilities, volatilities, uh, we have things moving. Uh, of course, we were talking about Beyond Meat yesterday with Kevin, and uh, you got a little pop out here today, but guess what? A little what? pop, double digits, After yeah. going down 45 bucks, man, it's going to need <laughs> more than a little 12% hike. Yeah. Exactly. Kevin Hinks, what's going on? Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tommy. Good morning, another Kevin. day, another big data point to talk about, guys. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. You know, the real question is going to be like, uh, you know, is, is it going to kick up uh, or is this, uh, you know, bottom line, you know, just going to lay out there at uh, 2%, right? Tommy, Tommy, I think this is important, though. If you look at the action in the bond market right after this number came out at 730, the bonds rallied 15 or 16 ticks. Right? Yeah. They're basically now all the way back down. They're up one tick right, right now in the, in, in the third year. And here's, I think, why. When you dove into the number a little bit, I want you to think about this. Food, up three-tenths of a percent. Medical expenses, up three-tenths. Housing, up 0.1. Apparel, unchanged. Uh, airfares, up 0.2. New vehicles, up 0.1. But guess what, guys? Energy prices, down 0.6. Yeah. Right. So lower gas prices have taken what might be a slightly stronger number and muted it to yeah. this market. You know, it, the gas thing is pretty cool. I mean, I, I filled up yesterday, and just from last week, it seems like even though you know the, the oil market's gone down, folks, the last three weeks, it takes them a while to find the ladder yes. and put the prices down. <laughs> Definitely, it certainly does. They go, they go up like a like a fire hose, yeah. and they trickle lower. They do, man. They do. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, wild. it's amazing. But I mean, I thought that was maybe a little bit of hidden strength inside that number that may be why the bonds, when they rallied, not to mention the fact that they're a little overbought, failed in, in that upside. I thought that was pretty interesting this morning. You know, you know, like we were talking about, even the last couple of days, uh, we were out eating last night, and I was just talking to a guy across the, the bar, and uh, it was really intriguing. Now, this guy's not even in the finance business. Well, he's, a, he's in the manufacturing business, right? Okay. He's a... He's a he goes to Toyota plants and manufactures the, uh, he's in charge of the, the tool structures, okay? And he brought up the aspect that, hey, listen, man, you know, everyone was talking about a recession. It seems like, okay, you know, maybe, you know, as the rates went higher, maybe we're getting close to one, but he thought that, like, that's gone. And I saw, I totally agree with him. I mean, and it's like, it was really cool hearing it from someone else that, you know, it seems like the economy and cash flow is still going on. It's like, when I start talking about recession, I say to myself, I just don't see it. And in the aspect of what he said, 
even if there was one there, I think it's over anyway. I mean, it's, it's yeah. be, there's a lot of there's a lot of moving pieces here, but it's just hard to comprehend that you know you're going to back down from a three to two and a half to two to a minus one. You know, it's like okay, hold it. You know, I just don't see it. So we'll see how it shakes yeah. out. You know. You know, just ask the NFIB small business number from Tuesday. They don't see this economy slowing. You know, it's funny. I was on with Oliver Rennick this morning, and we were talking about the data has been pretty uh, consistent along the way. What changed in the last two weeks is some of the comments from the Fed, frankly. Their uh, rhetoric, which now they're in a quiet period, so they can't say anything, yes. but it was a lot of their rhetoric about what they would do and – their comments on inflation that I think really spent, sent the bond market into hyperspace here. But I mean, the account, you know, the the PPI, CPI, those numbers came out muted, but certainly in line to where the expectations were. So yeah, this is a crazy market. There's a lot of opinions on are they going to raise rates or not. And I'm frankly in the camp. They may lower rates. I keep saying raise because it's been on my brain yeah, for the right. last nine quarters, but. <laughs> Are they going to lower rates? I don't think anytime soon. I'm I'm in the camp that they're not raising now. Yes. If if they if they do, I'd be wrong. Well, you know it's crazy, man. And and folks, okay, we we get the Fed fund futures up right now, and you have an 81 percent probability that. And the meeting July 31st, they're going to drop the rates. Yeah, you have one meeting, Kevin. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not saying that I, I might be wrong on this. And Jerome Powell and some of the comments from the FOMC certainly says that they're willing to move rates back down. It's just, boy, it's hard for me. I've just never seen it in my career. A con you know, lowering rates in an overall economy this healthy. Oh, I agree, it's, man. Yeah, it's, it's, I, that's why I, I chuckle. I, I, I just I, brought it up. I totally agree, Kevin. We both did. There is no doubt. I'm saying to myself, man, you know you know what I'd love to do? I'd love to have bomb fires. And I'd, like taking, I'd like taking a lighter fluid and really putting it on and blowing it up. And that's, <laughs> they lower rates, man. That's exactly what we're going to get. Like, yeah. Okay, let's yeah. supercharge this baby. One of the interesting, Kevin, just going down to the, when do they expect two rate hikes, right? And it's crazy. By, by September, the market has 48%. Um, of two rate hikes, and you know, I yeah, wow. three oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, See, yeah. I'm doing the same yeah. thing. No, cuts, cuts, would make, cuts, cuts, listen, cuts. I, I get it. I get it. Man. I am just having a tough time connecting those dots yeah. based on you know everything that I've seen in my trading career. It's a, it's tough to connect those dots. I, there's, there's, It'd be really there's interesting to see what happens in the market if they really do have two rate cuts in three meetings. I think um, it would go to the moon. Yeah. I, I can't picture it not going to the moon. Or if then, you, what you, if they don't? Right? And then what if they don't? Yeah. And those Fed fund futures are so far off. I don't yeah. know. It's going to have some volatility. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, and here's Interesting too, Kevin, is that we know that you know September, October, are always kind of rough months. If they don't like come down, if the market expects them to come down, it's like I can see that like a little rough patch at the end of the summer. Then maybe they get down a half a point. That'll blow people's minds. Really, like wow. Sure. Oh, and I keep here's saying. the number to think of, guys. Here's the last thought. Since October third, when Droll Powell made his infamous statement that we're a long way from being neutral and and yields were at 3.1 percent yeah at then right the s p 500 is down 1.3 percent 39 points not it's been a wild time since october it is. It is. <laughs> folks right here 45 minutes from now kevin you have a great one safe one we look forward to the program have a great day guys thanks thank kevin. you stay right there folks tommy and i come right back The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien have just announced a special webinar on June 19th for all subscribers to the TAS Profile Scanner. Steve and Tom will break down the trade matrix, market breadth, heat grid, as well as the three-step process you can use with the TAS Profile Scanner to identify market movers and how to capitalize on that move. For all the details and to get started with the TAS Profile Scanner today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. Go sign up today. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow right now is down at 23. You get the Nasdaq off 31. S&Ps are off 4.5. Let's see what we get action out here. What's uh, the highest volume equities uh, at this time? Oh, Dave and Busters are taking it on the chin, man. That's, you know... Uh, Mike, okay, we'll, I heard the we'll, guys at Thinker Swim in uh, Fast Market. They were talking about that yesterday. They I heard were. briefly. Um, they were. Down 11 bucks, trading 40 bucks. Uh, you get uh, Beyond Meat up 8, 134. What was that in 184 yesterday? We're on it the, was, uh, yeah, two yeah. days ago maybe. But uh, You got uh, Tesla down a buck 40. Uh, let's see. We're, uh, Roco is up four bucks. Not bad. Yeah, so if we go inside the uh, NDX, let's take a look at the NDX 100. S Semantic is up 1.8. Mercado Libre is up 1.5. Gilead's up 1.4. Starbucks is up 1.3. Starbucks. Yeah, look at this taken away from it, though. Look at this. Holy cow. Western Digital's down 4.5. Micron's down 4.5. What's going on the chips? AMAT's down 4.5. Lamb Research's down 4. Is this nobody going to buy any chips anymore? The, I'll tell you, this What's is, going this, on? You know, the, this is where the NASDAQ, folks, this is where the huge problems can come in in the NASDAQ and the uh, NDX 100. And these chips, man, they can bring the NASDAQ up and down, like, and then it just drags the S&P. Can you the jump around to the news after you yeah. finish? I'm curious what, uh... Someone must have downgraded something's the Something's doing whole something, thing. yeah. Let's see. Not much there, right? Doesn't matter oh, which one we yeah. bring up. Uh, L Maybe Lamb Research, yeah. And then you had... Oh, one more time. You had, uh... Could try Micron maybe after. I mean, it could be, but they all kind of... Downgraded... Uh, to in line, Evercore. So Evercore might be the culprit. They might have done a big downgrade. Evercore, right? ISI analyst. Okay, so that's one downgrade. Micron. Yeah. They're just selling them, man. Yeah. I, I mean, mean interesting article. I suspect there's something out there, though. Interesting article that does not have to do with what we're seeing today, but yeah. why Micron sank 22% in May. I mean, they've been struggling, man, just to point, you know, in terms of talking about some volatility. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, so what's going to be cool here watching this, folks, is to see, you know, how it comes into this lower swing point of uh, $32.17. So we had 28 million shares there. 
You know, you, you, you come in, this is like a, a really anemic bounce. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so what is sticking out here is that uh, December 26th low. You better believe it. And that's, you know, if you get, if you get, let's have SMHs. If, if we get the chips down there, guess what? Market's going down there. So SMHs are only off a buck 64. Yeah. Um, it just might be a NVDA. downgrade of some of those leaders, maybe. Yeah. They're, they're selling them down, they man. They sure are. They're man. selling them down. That's pretty intense. Oil. All right. Let's go. It's Wednesday, man. We get those oil inventory numbers at 1030. There's your crude contract. We're looking at the June, uh, July. July crude. So quite an acceleration, right? 51.49, that low uh, of yesterday. We get a little pop. We're trading at 52.13. Um, so we get the numbers at 1030. Excuse me. It's about 1021. We're going to jump in here. We jumped around during the break. Uh, we were looking for volatility trades with exposure, bullish and bearish. One of the nice ones that lined up. Now, this is ticked a little bit positive, but they have a 52. We jumped into the dailies. So these have exposure until 2.30. They're $3 spreads. So we're going to have bullish exposure from 52 to 55. Yep. Bearish from 52 to 49. Excuse me. And here's our bullish trade. This is the one that's going to have 12 cents of intrinsic value. That's going to cost us 47 so you're paying 12 bucks basically for value. You're paying 35 for premium. On the flip side, it's going to be the exact same usually. There's your 35 for premium, yeah. no intrinsic value. So, boy, you're looking at 77 bucks. Big, big dollars. Representing here, 77 cents. Right. Add a few bucks on in commissions. You're looking right. at 80 cents, give or take, yeah. that you need to be away from 52 to reach a break even. My goodness, you, need, too much. you need some big action. Um, and the market, you know, you've gotten a lot of volatility with crude, man. Oh, the, yeah. The market's no, pricing is... some premium. You yeah. got till 2.30, you have $3. And in this stance, I think they're assigning some of that premium to the fact that you might get almost $3 of movement. Yes. It's possible. No, no. I, I, Sometimes, it's... some days, you, it's really not impossible, but would be very rare with the right. types of moves you're getting. The market right. is not just assigning premium for the time, which is usually what happens here, right? Yeah. But I believe with this type of price, there's a lot of premium. There and I is. bet some of that premium is the fact that there's a um, the implied volatility. There's a realistic estimation that it might go to 250, yeah. uh, something yeah. like that. Yeah, you can see that. If, let, can we just pull this go up for, for a second? So, CLN, CLN9. So, when you look at this, now, my, my take, folks, is that we want to get down to this 44. That being said, this is not a lot of volume today in the oil market as you're getting to lower price. Uh, last low out there had 943 or 332. Let me just see this intraday. And I believe that was a week ago, so that was probably yeah. on the EIA. Um. Now look at this. So you get a nice pop up here, 52.25. Then you get this other one down here. This is, you know, I mean, we had a big build last night, and um, you know, I put a big build in. What it? We put a big build. I think five, number, put, six, or yeah, five point six million, 5 .6 million um, which building. is an outlier. I think the estimate's like an increase of a million or something yeah, like that. Four hundred something. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not right. But you know, looking at this, I'm bearish, but I think you're going to get a little pop here. Um, I think this is still building costs for lower price. Well, if you're paying those so, types of premiums, you better be looking for a big pop, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, no, no, I know I'm, you're not. I'm with I'm you. Saying, no, I'm with right. you. No, it's, totally. Um, I think we're still going to be in that building cause. We've only been here five days, and because we come down from 66, it's going to take more uh, building cause in order to get to that lower price. I think we're going to mess around a little here. So we'll see where this shakes out, man. So let's just see mm -hmm. how some of these, I think they had 52.25. So we just set it up with 52 being the price, the pivot point, right? Yeah. So you had a little bit of value on the bullish side. I think if we jump in here, there we go. So the noons, we're going to have 52.25. Now, we've ticked up. We're about the same, almost 12, 13, 14 pennies away from this one, but on the bearish side, you have value, right? So this is going to be our bearish spread. You're going to have 10, 15 cents of intrinsic value. So you're looking at 33. There's your bullish, all premium, 19. She's talking about $52. Now, the difference being, though, you have a 15 cent head start to the downside. So yeah. you got to make 52 bucks, call 50 cents, right? You know, plus a few. Um, but you have 15 cents. So if you're a little bit bearish, maybe, not, not the end of the world, but right. again, 52 cents, even if you get a move to the bearish side where you have your head start, you still need 35 cents. Yeah. And if you get the pop bullish, you need to go all the way to. 52.75 almost talking about 65 cents before you break even yeah and keeping in mind that you're capped out at 53.75 so you need 65 cents of movement to start making money and then you're capped out like a buck later if you really get yeah. um so we'll see 
1026 right now. We get the numbers in four minutes, man. Let's go Rock take a and look roll. at the uh, XLE. So the XLE out here, that's lower, 2.8 million shares. Well, that's going to get, that's going to be decent volume out here. Well, except it's going into, it's going to 32 million. The high there is 61.22. We'll take a look at this. These things have underperformed any, anyway. oh, yeah, these, not XLE is still in trouble. We'll see. Oil pulled back pretty hard last night. So it I did. From the open of, from yeah. the close last night to the open this morning, it said, whoa, low, right. lower prices. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. We have the Dow Industrials down 36, NASDAQ off 38, S&P's off 7, and yeah, that, uh, that the NQs, folks, are pressing low, and they have volume. So you got to watch that NQ. He's down 42. This looks like it wants to break out as low right now. Tommy and I come right back. Folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's down 40. Nasdaq off 38. S&P's up 7.5. And, and oil. Let's take a look at these oil numbers out here. So, headline number, crude oil inventories rising 2.21 million barrels. Gas inventories rising 764,000 barrels. Jumping back to the charts, seeing how we're hitting the market. Right now, you have oil trading 52.18. A little bit of a pop on that, but it pulled back pretty quickly, man. We're trading at 52.12 about, coming into that yeah. number. You spike up to 52.32. 
and um, right back to where we were right now. Yeah. Um, so we'll so see how it. They got a lot of premium in there for uh, not much movement at this particular point. And I guess as they break this down, we'll get the full breakdown within about a minute or two usually, but I guess the entire build in Cushing. Um, so I wonder where the expected breakdowns were of the Cushing yeah, versus right. um, Pad 3, right? They right. Have the variety. There we right. go. There okay. Go. So median estimate was a decline of a million barrels. We right. came in at a surplus of 2.2. Yeah. Gas, pretty close, 764 versus a 900 build expected. Uh, distillates, kind of a reversal of a 1.1 decline, uh, excuse me, a million decline. Estimate was an increase of 1.1. And uh, there's Cushing, about Cushing two, had the two million one. barrels. Yeah, yeah, actually had a decrease in pad three crude. And uh, look at their refinery utilization. They're ramping it back up, right? Oh, yeah. been, so plus 1.4, estimate was plus 0.6. And um, crude imports. Minus 316,000 barrels that. a day, down. and production down as well. So that's we'll per day, huh? 360,000 per day. Yes, right? yes, yes. That's a lot. Man. That is definitely that's a lot. Oh, oh, give it a give it a few seconds, oh, man. Look, look at that. that. So we're trading 5186, quite a little thrust, especially yeah. when the the first head fake uh, up to 5230. Right. We're now 50 cents off and cheaper prices, man. We're going to be going for that low it had at 5 a.m. of about 5149, and it's not stopping, man. No, it's not. Not it's stopping. Not, That's where yeah. some defined risk would be nice. I don't know how you navigate. Uh, we're now talking about a 60 cent bar in the span of about 30 seconds. Right. 877 927 6648. We go take a look at the uh, broad market now. You have the, yeah, the NASDAQ is, uh, NASDAQ's leading us down. You know, we just had just brought those chip stocks up. Yes. We, uh, the NASDAQ folks, <laughs> you gotta love trading the NASDAQ because it's this, uh, that thing. I mean, you know, it's it's only twenty dollars a point in the futures, but the 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 amount of points that this thing can move so fast is like amazing. Yeah. Sure. Right when we were coming into the break, that's when it was just breaking this low out here, of that seventy four ninety eight. You got seventy four ninety three. Now you're breaking this with with juice and saying like, guess what? You know, you can get, go a lot lower now. Um, let's see. I, I suspect inside that it was still the same. Yeah. Look at all the chip stocks. 4.8, yeah. 4.6, 4.5, and 4.2. Um, Can you pull up some of the FANG stocks? I'm just curious yeah, totally. because, you we'll know, Facebook first. those chip ones are definitely going to hurt yeah. it, but they're not the biggest. So you got Facebook down, buck 20, nothing, yeah. nothing to dismiss. That's, yeah. that's a move. Google down 10 bucks. Ah. I mean, these are 1%, though, in the negative, yeah. and they're going to have big, big carries. Um, Amazon. Amazon down like 8 tenths, 8 tenths, 7 tenths percent. Netflix. Yeah. Pretty no. similar, 2% on Microsoft. Stuff. So, you know, what you want to do is keep your eye on Microsoft, folks. The reason I'm saying this is that Microsoft seems to be the strongest stock in the NDX 100, and just in the market in general, okay? So if you look at this, you're going to see that it's pretty powerful. I, I would agree. Yeah. And almost I mean, just fundamentally. It, it, it's cool, like, isn't it? I mean, I the know. chart's insane, it right, is. from that 2016. But it, just looking at, like, they don't seem like they're going to have the woes of antitrust. They've already dealt with those that's issues. Right. Um, that's they have right. an amazing cloud. You know, they do. business. Um, they, do. they have the amazing software as a service with right. Word. We have um, two different services. We have the uh, the Word service, and then uh, not the Word, the uh, the Office. Yes. Right. And then, Office 365, then, I believe. Right. right. And then with Navly, we have the accounting deal. Sure. Meaning, so it's and it's very right. inexpensive. Yes. I mean, you're talking about something for that, businesses especially. Right. It's very affordable right. for um, yeah. soft. But guess what? You don't get the buy name where you got to pay it every year, every no, month. Yeah. You know, they, no, it's no, amazing no, how they no. they all that's, just flip that's, that switch and that's how. Um, but yeah, let alone so. So this is the number to watch, folks. I was talking about this yesterday. If if Microsoft closes under this 131.87, uh, 131.37 this week, you know that's telling me that hey, the correction's on because this is the strongest stock, and you know it looks to me like Microsoft wants to go higher. You know what I mean? So it's like that bar from you know last week was great, man. You know what I mean? It's like okay, so if that closes low, it's like okay, well the strongest stock closes low, your probability goes a lot higher that you know. The rest of these equities are going to get sold. So. The other flip side is it's basically at all-time highs. That's the idea. No, I know. Just, you know yeah, <laughs> to right. point to a reversal for the one stock that's like literally crushing highs might be the. We'll see what happens in terms of Apple, and they could. What's, can we go back to the um, description uh, for um, Microsoft? Yeah. What's what's their market cap right now? I was just going to say. I mean, you could see them. You know, with that chart, really. Uh, yeah, one billion. Uh, excuse me, trillion. trillion. <laughs> Look at that. Um, and that's wow. what I knew. If it was at all-time highs, it's right around that area. Yeah. And um, I mean, you could see them take off, man. As in, you know, if you see Apple facing some big problems with trade, oh, yeah. trade problems. 
if you see Apple facing big problems with antitrust and Google and Facebook, uh, I don't see those hitting Microsoft. No. So you might see a reversal, and you still might see Microsoft be okay and you know sit at all-time highs as some yeah. of those tech stocks really struggle. You know, I just pulled up the uh, the 13Fs. You yes. can see uh, Morgan Stanley is going to be kind of happy. They they it looks like they got another third of a position. They, now you're looking at. This is March 31st, so we don't know what yeah, they're still on. That even could have been January, but that would have been amazing if it was January, January right? Because that January was a huge March, pullback, right? as in the low is December. Yeah. So it had to be after December, right. in between December and January right. and March. Uh, that's a great time to be buying, man. The market was going up. Yeah. They got uh, State Street going back. You know, they, they own 4% they own of it. Look at that. Now, State Street, that's going to be some of the ETF structures because okay. they're the, uh, I think they're the trustee of the SPY, actually. Let me see. So. I can't pull that up quick enough. I think they have the trustee of the spy, though. So, um, you know, bottom line is that uh, we get some action out here. Uh, you, you get two-way action, but that, that NASDAQ that NASDAQ looks to me like it wants a lower price. We get over the gold. Gold is uh, creeping higher out here, folks. This this gold contract wants higher price. Um, you're, at, uh, you're up 660 right now. you got 164,000 contracts. What we did do yesterday is we rejected lower price. You had low, lighter volume come in. I like how this is setting up coming in for Thursday and Friday. So if we can just stay up in this level, you know, the last time we were, we got a high there of uh, 331,000 contracts. That was 1352. You get another high of 1348, we had 400,000. So you're not going to get 400 to, no, you're not going to get 400 today, but. You stay, you hang up there in price. It won't be bad, you know. Let's check back to oil. Where are we going to be? Yeah. Oh, we're right back at 52, right where we started, man. Look at that. That's got to be frustrating if yeah. you made that volatility trade. And this is where, you know, quick fingers can never hurt, man, in terms of you had, a, you had an opportunity here maybe to close out that bearish trade if you thought it was going to be bullish. I'm not saying I would have even, you know, but no, just something yeah. to consider when you right. get a move that goes from 52.30 down to 51.64. Um, might be time to, uh, you know, if you don't think that move's going to be continuing, you always want to be revaluing that right. trade uh, right. because we've seen it many times. The first move's not always a move that hangs. Oh, yeah. and, and before we're done, we might be at $53 oil um, yeah. the way this moves sometimes. You get a lot of moving pieces out here. No two Seems ways like about. they might have priced that volatility uh, correctly coming in. I know. If you're getting 60 cents one way, 50 cents the other, yeah. and it's only eight minutes after the news, and they were pricing that till 2.30. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. We're going to go with our man, uh, come up with our man, Teddy Kegstad. Uh, Dow, right now, Dow is down 22. NASDAQ's off 36. S&P's off 5.5. Gold's up 6.70. Silver's up 4 cents. King Dollar's up 26. Come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com 
and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrial is down 19. NASDAQ off 29. S&P is off 4.5. Let's go over to my man, Mr. Teddy Kegstack, as we do each and every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. And every trading day, folks, you can reach Teddy at forex-trading-unlocked.com. That's forex-trading-unlocked.com. Teddy Kegstack, what's going on, brother? Good morning, guys. Good to see you guys again. Good morning, you too, Teddy. Man. You too. No doubt, man. Uh, how's life? Things are good. Things are good. We have uh, some interesting scenarios to talk about today with the currency markets. I like it. That's so, let's let's do it, man. Where I, do you want to start? I, I want you to okay. sell about a thousand contracts in the dollar index first. That's a good place <laughs> to start. Sure. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, the dollar index, I think, is going to see a lot of action. I think the next couple of days. We have some uh, economic numbers that are going to affect it. They're coming out. We have the CPI today. And we have the import-export index numbers coming out uh, tomorrow. And then Friday, I believe, is retail sales. So um, okay. all of which I think are going to give a little bit of a stir to the currency markets. Um, reason being is that they're also uh, bond market numbers. And with the, uh, the stance now that we know that there's little pressure that the Fed is probably might be cutting um, the rates possibly in the not-too-distant future, um, I think that's going to have a little bit of a play on the currencies, especially the dollar. Yes. Um, and uh, remember, a couple of weeks ago, we were looking for a bounce uh, where the, and the currency is against the dollar, which we did get over the past few weeks, um, depending on which currency costs you're looking at. Some were a little bit more extreme. Uh, but now we have a divergence going on. So the U.S. dollar seems to be gaining strength against all of the uh, lesser major currencies like the Canada, the yen, um, and uh, a couple other currencies. Okay. But we have the euro and the pound today, which were slightly higher while the other ones were lower. So, but now they're starting to fade and pull back. So I think that if you start to see the euro US dollar um, turn towards uh, making new lows today, especially selling lower, um, I got a sell signal on Monday in that market with the high being um, your risk level. And so far, if they tried to challenge it today and they failed, um, the same is going on in the British pound. So I think that if those start to erode and become a bear, then you're going to see dollar strength come into the market, in which we're going to start to see a new trend. And then the dollar index obviously would be rallying against that, that going uh, higher. Than that. Interesting. Yeah. So you're saying that the, like the, uh, you know, the, the euro, you know, for the last couple of weeks, we went from 111, you know, hit, uh, we were at 113. So you're figuring that the euro pulls back, right? Right, right. Well, Friday, last Friday was the blow off top, I think, for that okay. rally. Okay. So. And I think that's a good level to trade against for both the pound and for the euro would be Friday's high. So if you're a bear, I wouldn't want to be short above that. Nice. Yeah, and that's where the, if you watch the Tiger TV, folks, uh, that was quite a move Friday, huh? 112 to 113.48, huh? Yeah. Right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So. Interesting. And the yen, I know, I know you like the yen, yes. guys. So uh, I, I think that if, if this dollar is turning, then you're going to see the U.S. dollar, yen, pound, 
the, uh, the or excuse me, I'm sorry, the U.S. dollar yen will uh, turn around then. Okay. So we're at 108.40. Are you looking for like a 110 again, or what are we looking for there? Um, I would say, yeah, probably. I think okay. that's a good little area. Now, I'm not looking for a major turn. I'm not, that's, not, that's not at all what I'm looking for, because we have the G20 meeting coming up in a couple weeks. Yep. You know? So I think that if you, I mean, if, you, if your listeners are trade, especially like the euro, you had a, a monster move over the past like a uh, week and a half. But that looks like a monster move because it's been in such a tight range for six months. Right. A two dollar move all of a sudden looks like it was a, something crazy happened in the markets, right? Right. So you're, so really, you're really looking for consolidation from kind of where we are with all of these, probably, right? Is that what we're looking at? Yes, I think so. Yeah, I, think right, I can see that. Right. That's what we're going to do is we're going to start to establish the upper end of what's going to be a range trade for the next couple of months. Okay, cool. Nice. Yeah, no, you, you can see that. I can definitely see that because we had fast movement. Right after fast movement, it's got to take a breather, right? All of them probably. Right. Do you know what I mean? Right. That's now, way. what can happen is if we do get a rate cut in the United in the U.S., then that's going to cause either a big move up to set the, to raise the range or to um, press the range lower, okay. depending on the so yeah. but that remains to be seen we need a rate cut for that to happen otherwise I think you're, what we're doing is we're just establishing a wide range it's not going to be and we're not, I don't think we're going to see the euro up at 125 let alone going down to parity you know right so and but with the Swiss that's another key indicator too is let's see what happens with that if it can make a rally up to parity you know and hold above that well then we know that Dollar definitely is gaining strength again, and we'll probably yeah. see them back above, making new highs, probably up to 103, 104 handle. Okay. You know, obviously this would be over the next month and a half. This is not going to happen over. The so next that month. Swiss came down quite a bit, right? 102 to uh, actually with 99. I mean, that's four months, but that's interesting, right? I mean, that's right. The dollar look, didn't have that, that much movement and just weakness weeks. compared to what the Swiss has done here. Sure, and the Canada did the same thing. If you guys look at a daily Canada okay. chart. With just a week and a half, you have the highest high and the lowest low on the that's chart for the past four or five months. Yeah, that's quite a move, man. Yeah, so, and that's why I think there's the, that looking at this divergence in the currencies, if if this is what's, if, the, if they're the leading indicator, like remember how two weeks ago we looked for the Swiss and the Canada to be, they were the first little indicator that yes. the dollar was turning. So now maybe this is the same thing that's occurring again today or over the past couple of sessions. So a rally in the U.S. dollar Swiss, a rally in the U.S. dollar Canada, which is going on. And look at that low in the Canada. That low was a gap open lower, and then it closed above the, the low of that big exacerbated low, down day prior right. to that. So, so what he's looking at, folks, is that the low of the big day was uh, 132.62, and then uh, he closed at that 132.69. I see. Okay, cool. Yeah, you know, it's going to be wild, man. I mean, is that, you know, you, you look at these interest rates, it seems like interest rates are going down all over the world. So it's like, who's going to get the lowest rates? And I guess it's going to be the, the currency is going to be whoever has the highest rates of the lowest rates, right? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Right. Who would have thought that, too? I mean, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, if you were going to say that we'd be riding low rates like this for as long as we have, right. I think everyone would scratch their heads and be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Seriously. I think man. you're right. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you know, we were just talking to Kevin Hinks earlier, and it's hard to wrap your head around that, you know, the economy seems to be going fine. And if you look at the Fed fund futures rate, uh, was the July one was what 89 percent? 80 percent for a cut at the next meeting, not this, not in, June. Yep. In July. Yep. And there's a there's a two percent. Uh, no, uh, in September was it September or October that there was the a next, probability of 48 percent to get two rate yeah. cuts. Yeah. So the Five. third meeting from now, yeah. it's almost like a 50 percent that there's two cuts by their in there within three meetings, counting June as the first. Right. Yeah. Pretty well. Right. Makes me. Are you guys curious about why they would actually really be cutting rates right now? I, I think this is not the time to be cutting rates. You that's, know? What, that's what we're talking about. It's almost about. going to be interesting it's, no matter which way they go, I right, Teddy? It's like if they do that many cuts, like, wow, is the market going to go through the moon? And then it's like, but sure. what if they don't? Because it's like priced into the Fed fund yeah. futures. There's going right. to be a reaction sure. on that right. side as well. And then um, if, they, if they, there's good arguments on both sides. No, there so is. Like, and then if they do, I think we just say is that okay? What's going on out here? What, right. what do we have that we don't know? Right? <laughs> what's, sure. out, what's out here sure. that we don't? They're supposed to be ahead a little bit, you know, right. but to be cutting at all-time highs and wow, right. geez, what are they ahead of? Yeah. Listen, folks.
Yes. Every trading day, check it out. Forex-trading-unlock.com. That's forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy, you have a Thanks, great guys. week. Safe week, man. We look forward to speaking next Wednesday. Sounds great. Thank Take you. Care. Take, Take care. Much. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. Dow's flat. Nasdaq's off 19. S&P's down two and a half. We'll come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South Africa, African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Basil Chapman has a special subscriber webinar coming up Wednesday, June 12th at 5 p.m. called The Tide. In this webinar, Basil will be demonstrating techniques that can help one identify whether the tide is coming in or going out. That is, whether a trend is bullish or bearish in a variety of time frames. And Basil will be speaking specifically to indices, currencies, commodities, interest rates, and key stocks. The technical tools that Basil will be discussing are available on almost all software packages that will be shown in historical context as well as live for current market setups. Identifying the key trend allows one to trade with the tide rather than against it. Subscribers also gain immediate access to three archived workshops so you can get started right away when you sign up. For all the details on the opening call and Basil's upcoming subscriber webinar, The Tide, this coming Wednesday, visit the front page page of tfnn.com and sign up today this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com Dow. Dow's down eight. Nasdaq off 21. S&P's off three and a half. And we talk about the tide, man. Where's it we, going? We got our man Basil Chapman. We're going to find know. out tonight at that's, five o'clock. That's right. Uh, amazing. June 12th, it's here. Basil is going to be in there with subscribers to the opening call starting tonight at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. The opening call, Basil's daily trading service. He'll be in there for 90 minutes. The tide, talking about whether the tide's coming in, it's going out. That is whether the trend is bullish or bearish. Yeah. He's going to be looking at a variety of time frames. He'll also speak about indices, currencies, commodities, rates, key stocks. Bezel loves breaking it down on those time frames, right? You know how he has the monthly, the yep. daily, the hourly, or the 120-minute. And this is an hour-and-a-half workshop, folks. Yeah. I mean, this is a pure education, big time. He does a great job, yeah. Eddie D. The, the, there's no bored, uh, low moments in those 90 minutes right. that Bezel puts right. out. Um, so this will be archived. It'll be on your subscriber page. Uh, probably either by tonight or tomorrow morning. If you can't attend live, you can't have the 90 minutes, but I encourage you to attend live because he's going to be taking questions during it. Uh, he does a great job. He'll be in there. And plus, you get 30 days of the opening call. New subscribers get a money-back guarantee. 
Great day. Go check it yep. out. Sign up for the opening opening call right on the front page, and you'll be in there at 5 o'clock tonight. June 12th. The tide, baby. June 12th. The tide. And speaking of the tide of oil, like a little bit of volatility, man. It yeah. can't quite figure out where it wants to go. I know. We spiked down to 51.64. We're back up to 52.30. Boom, we're back down to 51.82. Um, we'll find out. The day is young. We'll see where that crew contracts goes. Well, no doubt. Yes. And if we get over, just look at that dollar just... Uh, one more time, you can see that this dollar is, my take is that we just, we're building cars for lower price, but just as Teddy said, I think we had a little consolidation here, you know, sideways move, we'll see how this shakes out. Okay. Meaning uh, back and forth. Okay. So this, is the, this is the patience. Oh, uh, patience in many things in life. Trading mm -hmm. is one of them for sure. Big time. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. we got Fast Market coming up next. And we got our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. Be back this afternoon. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, man. Don't forget Basil, folks. Time to rock tonight. The tide. Great time.